Angelo here, welcome to my channel, and welcome back to my stream. So again, Ranto Button has been hit, and with that, Solid asked me a nice little question here, it's, have you ever enjoyed single player RPG? If so, which is your favorite and why? Now, bringing it back, um, the number one that I remember playing that was a whole total game changer, that at the time I never thought was possible, uh, was Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is probably the one game I was able to constantly go back to because there are multiple endings. Um, not only that, I borrowed a buddy of mine, uh, a buddy of mine's game, and he already had everything, everything set up. Like, he had the best gear. He had all the stuff. So I'm playing his, his game, and the whole thing about it, like, you can beat the game early. And because he had such rigged stats and I was using his New Game Plus, that's another thing. It's an RPG with New Game Plus. How crazy is that? So that's why he had, he played the game multiple times and he was able to get, um, like all of the things fully decked out. So all the characters, even like the crappy characters you would never play in, uh, play as or whatnot, he had them at max level and max gear and all that stuff. So I'm having like the easiest time running through this game and it's a section halfway in the game where your character is not supposed to be strong enough to beat Lavos. Like, technically the last boss. But you can beat him at that point. It's like, what other video games do that? What other video games where you're able to beat the last boss before the last boss? Because technically, in the, at this point of the game... I mean, come on. The, the game's been out for fucking decades now, okay? There's a part where the main character dies. <laughs> main character dies. Um, technically, technically, you know, or just gets defeated. Let's, let's put it that way. He gets defeated and then it's a, a character swap. So maybe I should have hit it with the spoilers, you know, hit it some spoilers on that. But, uh, yeah, just with that, it was crazy to know that. And then, so after I beat it the first time, I told my friend, I was like, dude, yeah, this, this game is too short. It was easy. No problem. It's like, did you beat? The boss, I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I beat that boss. He was easy as fuck, you know? Or, I mean, it was actually still a challenge. Even with all the rig gear, it was like, it was kind of close, but I was able to beat him. Yeah, no problem. He's like, oh, uh, he's like, that's actually a point where that's, and, and basically, I guess he was telling me that was like the halfway point. So then you can lose at that point, And when you lose at that point, you, you continue the game. <laughs> so it's so weird to me I thought it's like I have to intentionally lose this game but again I wasn't playing it fresh so then years later somehow some way I fucked up and I got his entire save deleted like I, I got all of his stuff deleted all of his new game plus and I was like fuck man I am sorry he's like oh dude that that's fucked up so I was like alright dude I will get it back for you now granted I was cheating at the time and I used this thing called game genie and I was able to kind of, you know, get through a little faster. I still did it legit, but I, I think I gave myself just maybe, like, uh, unlimited money or something like that. Yeah, I was, I was cheating. But, hey, I was trying to cheat to get him back to the level he was because he spent some time on that fucking game and on that save. So I was doing my best, and I was trying to replay it as much as I could to, to get him. And then it was during that time when I had to replay everything that I noticed how awesome and how great of a game that was. Not to mention the game was drawn and created by the same guy that did Dragon Ball Z. Akira Toriyama, so all the character designs and everything are there, so you can see people that look like Vegeta, like I believe Magus looked like Vegeta, like, um, uh, fuck, I can't remember his name, um, the hero, the hero character, he looked, cause I believe you can always name, this is back in the day when you can actually name all your characters, and, uh, like, you could just totally see how, like, the main character looks just like Goku, Gohan, and all them, he has the same spiky hair, all that stuff, and all the other different characters, you can see, the heavy influence that Akira Toriyama did, because again, all of his designs. So, if you're talking about that, Dave, that is definitely probably the single player like RPG that I enjoyed the most. Probably, yeah, without a doubt. That that was that was the one that I played a lot, and I thought it was really really cool. Um, also, because of the story, you know, that I destroyed my friend's saves. I mean, aside from that, I mean, there's others. RPGs that I played, like, when it came to stories, you know, um, there's also, like, Final Fantasy 3, Final Fantasy 6, you know, because, you know, it was 3 here in America on Super NES, then there was Final Fantasy 6, things like that, um, but in terms of, like, modern day games, um, I have to say there was a game, the last one I played was on PlayStation 2, it was, um, 
what was it called? It was called uh, Rogue Galaxy, I think. It had the same voice actor that did Batman Beyond. And when he did that, um, that was a solid game, honestly. Um, but no, nah, man, I, yeah, I, I play a lot of RPGs back in the day. Not as much now. Um, oh, another one. I forgot about this one. If you're also talking about that during this genre type. Um, Secret of Mana. I still have that cartridge to this day, but that, that was an amazing game as well. Uh, a three-player RPG. Who knew, huh? A fucking a RPG game where you can play three players. And this is before, like, Kingdom Hearts. So this game had the ability where you can have, literally, you, you plug in a multi-tap, and you can play, have someone playing as the, the sprite, the girl, and the boy. So you can have all three people being played. I know they remade it, but it's not quite the same. Um, what else are there? I did not like Final Fantasy VII, truth be told. Um, I remember when I played that game, I was already a year late, and I was like just picking up for the first time. You know, remember, I'm poor, so I got to get all these games like years later or years after. So that's the only way I was able to play them. And then uh, I was playing Final Fantasy VII. I was like, oh, man, all right, cool. I finally got it. I think I got, I got to play it finally like a year later. I was able to buy it. And then when I bought it, um, you know, on discount, heavy discount, um, <laughs> One of my friends, uh, oh yeah, sucks when Aeris dies at the end of disc one. It's like, fuck me, man. <laughs> it's like, thanks, 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 dude. That's, I'm assuming that was a big, big, big story part, huh? It's, oh yeah, man, it's, it sucks. And um, <laughs> I can't remember if that's how it was or it was right when I was about to get to the end of disc one. I think I was right about to get to the end of disc one and I liked the character Aeris. So, or Aerith, however the fuck they're calling her now. We, we thought her name was Aerith back then. But um, I got her her fourth weapon. Because, like, I was like, dude, I was able to get her her best weapon? What the hell, dude? This is awesome. So, like, uh, I had her best weapon and everything. And then, lo and behold, she dies. And that's the reason why you can have it. So I was like, fuck, uh, did I just waste all my time leveling Aerith and having her one of my strongest party members? I was like, yeah, I did. But uh, besides that, like I said, I wasn't the biggest fan of that. I was more of a big fan of Final Fantasy VIII. Yes, I know. The game that a lot of people said they hated. But I guess back then I was a graphic snob. So when they actually stopped doing the chibi characters and full-scale characters and everybody's like the actual size, I thought that was like groundbreaking. Yeah. And if I had to say anything, like I said, the last uh, classic RPG that I played, played technically was um, Rogue Galaxy on PlayStation 2. And, um, yeah, that's, that game is a, a great, if you're an RPG guy, check that one out, you know, there's, yeah, it was really enjoyable for that. Yeah, Final Fantasy X was pretty good too. Yeah, I'm, now I'm just naming off the games that everybody knows, but I think the game a lot of people haven't played that I actually did get a kick out of. It did get a little monotonous near the end after a while due to the battle system the way it was but just it was still pretty cool to me and i enjoyed it um but yeah rogue galaxy that was in my opinion a hidden gem that not a lot of people got a chance to play so if you can check that one out but if you're asking for my original original thought it was uh chrono trigger that game just had it all different enemies multiple enemy uh multiple endings um character design come on it's, it was hand drawn by one of the greatest like artists ever Especially for just art style and things that you know. But there you go, Dave. Hope your 10,069 10,069 jellos or AGL points were worth it. End rant. It's not really an angry rant, but it's a good rant. So thank you all for watching. Let me know what you guys uh, had as your favorite um, uh, RPGs. If you guys played RPGs, do you think it's just boring? And maybe that's the reason why I can level in this game and level so much. Because, I mean... Even this guy. I thought it would be boring, but, you know, leveling's not bad. I, I, I guess eventually I just got pretty decent at it. Pretty good. Alright, guys. Let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys out there.